Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one. The Three Great Motivations of Humankind. Written by Random3x. Malai walked down the hallway towards a grand ceremony where a human inventor, of all things, would be awarded the Star Bell Prize. Miley was beside himself with ire that such a thing had been allowed to pass. This was an award meant for the greatest minds and engineers of the universe. For such an insignificant race such as humanity to be awarded it was beyond his ability to comprehend. Though it defied his will, it did not defy the councils, and he was but a humble servant of the council themselves. Arriving near the stage, he could see the podium where the host of the category before his was giving his speech, extolling the virtues of the recipient of the Star Bell Prize for Peace. I would like to thank the Helicotopip, the destroyer of souls, for bringing peace to the Arcadius sector. For, with this tireless effort, conflict is no longer in the minds and souls of the sector's inhabitants. The host announced, gesturing to the other side of the stage. Slithering out of the shadowy area was a visceral horror, a being so indescribable that no two beings ever saw the same thing. The audience all clapped in near-perfect robotic unison. Well, I had no doubt that the creature was using some kind of psychic field to induce such a phenomenon. It was even Valai's suspicion this creature used such a power to induce peaceful sentiments in the mind of the two warring races. Still, it mattered little. The results spoke for themselves. Two races that were at war with one another for centuries, slaughtering in countless worlds, now held a steady and lasting peace. The creature accepted the award and turned to face the audience. Minutes of silence dragged on until the audience gave a robotic laugh. Evidently, it had conveyed a minor joke. Then, with a bob of what might be its head, it slithered away, and it was Valai's turn to present the award. Walking onto the stage, Valai approached the podium and swallowed his vitriol. From what he'd been told, the human in question had requested Valai be the one to present the award. Such a human must not know him well if that was the case. Thank you, everyone, well, I began. We are here to award the Starbar Prize for Engineering. Long have engineers, scientists, and all manner of intelligent species dreamed of making personalized wormhole devices. But due to the Vastari constant, the ability to miniaturize the mechanics was deemed that of fiction. Well, I paused to sweep his gaze over the audience. It is this constant that has only recently been disproven and overcome by the wiliest of species. The human engineer known as Nigel Planar worked tirelessly to solve the problem that all before have failed. Well, I gestured to his left, where the human named Nigel walked out and waved to the audience that was now applauding. Looking at the features of the human, Will I felt a spark of recognition but couldn't place where he recognized him from. Holding out the award for the human, Valai swallowed the bile that had surged upwards. He held the opinion humans were the most disgusting of species around. Stepping aside to allow the human Nigel access to the podium, Valai stealthily wiped his hand on his robe in an attempt to remove the human particles from his being. Thank you, thank you, Nigel gestured for the applause to calm down. I'm here because I achieved something many deemed impossible. But what drove me to attempt such a thing? He rhetorically asked. You see, we humans are motivated by three things. Sometimes it can be all three, others it'll be just one. But at the end of the day, it is my opinion that it is these three that guide humans to develop as we do. What are these three, you may ask? Well, the first is a genuine fascination. We are like children overflowing with wonder. Our eyes light up and we can't help but push further than any sane sentient would. Nigel paused and swept his gaze over the raptured audience before holding up two fingers. The second is ego. Many inventions have been made due to the human's desire to be remembered for recognition and all that comes with it. This award would be a dream come true for one motivated as such, Nigel said, holding up the Starbell prize aloft. I, however, am not 
these first two categories, well, maybe a little bit of the first, he said with a chuckle that was echoed back by some of the audience. You see, I am firmly in the third category, and it is Sir Valai I can thank for putting me in that category and motivating me to make my creation. Nigel gestured to Valai, who was stunned at being referenced at all. He felt a swell of pride at being indirectly responsible for this invention, albeit slightly tainted pride due to the human being responsible. You see, dear people, the third motivator is... Spite. Nigel paused as there was murmurs of shock. Vali himself was stunned at the statement. You see, we humans can be motivated to prove something to someone who has wronged us. Many years ago, I met Sir Vali. Then he scoffed at my work, said that it was the most primitive and ugly creation he'd ever seen, and my ideas on creating miniaturized wormhole device were laughable. In fact, he did laugh loudly in my face, if I recall correctly. Vali began retreating slowly as Nigel continued. That night, a burning desire to see him swallow his words was born. I worked day and night and found a way to do what all before had deemed impossible. My dear audience, we humans are creatures that will achieve great things if properly motivated. Sometimes it is just a feck you to a certain someone. Nigel turned to face Vali and held up his middle finger. Feck you. Sir Valai, your name will forever be a joke. With those final words, Nigel bowed and left the stage. End of story. Story number two. Tide's Turn, written by British Tea Company. Exactly 134 years ago, one of the most infamous events in galactic history transpired upon the moon of Ares Cecidus now the largest military research facility within the heart of the Terran Empire. Prior to that, the Terran Empire, known as the United Colonies of Terra, had been a fledgling, star-faring civilization, which had felt the jackboot of the Malvern Imperium. The Terran Navy had been in splinters, crushed by numerical and technological superior forces of the Malvern race. After the scourging of their homeworld of Terra, it would seem as though the Terrans would have no choice but to submit to the Morvan rule, like so many other races before them. The first step on the subjugation was to pay vast tributes to the moon of Ares Cecidus, where a large naval base had been erected as a staging point against the Terran civilization. Demanding hefty sums of tribute, the Morvan would beggar their new additions to the Imperium and further cement the difference between master slave. Throughout the entire week of the negotiated surrender, thousands of cargo ships were sent to Arius Cecidus to drop off the tribute that was demanded. The fortress's countless censors confirmed that the Terrans had indeed been true to their end of the bargain. If there was still one lifeline that the Terrans had to that time, however, it was their masterful use of deception. The Morvan Fortress on Ares Cecidus had been outfitted with the most advanced scanning technology known to the galaxy to know that the Terrans would fulfill the end of the bargain. Had just one alien bothered to personally check the containers, the Terran future would have been lost to an age of servitude. But that would not have to be the case as the entirety of Cecidus busily gorged itself in celebration for the evening. The heavy usage of cloaking which Terrans used in their wars it wasn't enough to win them the war, but it would certainly win them their future as more van scanners picked up cargo ships filled to the brim with precious metals and chemicals rather than hordes of unbroken Terran army bitter over the bombardment of their whole world. These soldiers who had undertaken this mission had never received mercy in a single time in their long battle against the Imperium. They would not be generous enough to give it back. It was midnight when the cargo containers burst open all throughout the storage within the Morvan Fortress. Armed to the teeth, from shotguns to flamethrowers, axes to swords, the Terran army had prepared itself for the most brutal and bloody coast quarters battle that they had seen in their enemy's home. To their luck, they had found that the entire garrison and the majority of the crews had been heavily celebrating, many of them on the verge of passing out from the heavy whining and dining. 
the Battle of Arisacetus was not infamous because it was in reality a massacre which changed the tide of a losing war. It was infamous because of the sheer brutality and savagery the Terran army embraced in its retribution against the Morvans. The lucky ones had been torn apart by shotgun blasts or beheaded in their drunken stupor, oblivious to the Terran attack. Most were not granted quick deaths. Dozens of mess halls were transformed into screaming funeral pyres as the Terrans set fire inside and locked the doors. Those that didn't meet house fires saw no better fate. Helpless and unarmed, the hated Morvans were thrown out of airlocks, lynched, dismembered, clubbed to death, flayed alive, and some were even crucified. The Terrans took full glee in their deeds following the massacre as they commandeered the fortress and took what they were looking for, the armada that was moored in the dry docks. Images of the slaughter were leaked to Morva Prime, capital of the Morvan Imperium. As the Imperium's leadership reeled in the mobilized and other falls to deal with the resurgent Terran military power, a chilling message was displayed to the aliens. We are coming for you. End of story. I just quickly want to thank the Tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Ken Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.